everyone welcome to the next session of strength of materials in this session we are going to discuss about thin spherical shells since the spherical shell is thin radial stresses are neglected this is something we have already discussed hoop or circumferential stress is assumed to be constant over the thickness that is sigma c will be uniformly distributed over the thickness Longitudinal stress is not different since sphere does not have a length. This is something you can understand that there will be nothing called as sigma L because there is nothing called as length in a sphere. It only has a diameter. So now you can see that this is a sphere that I have taken. This is the thickness T. This is very small because it's a shell. And this is the diameter D, internal diameter. And there is liquid filled inside. So the pressure from inside will be P. Now suppose if because of pressure this thing breaks into half, you can see the half that I have drawn over here. This is the stress which is generated by the material and this is the area by which the material is resisting the change in shape or it is not going to get exploded or broken because this area is trying to resist the change. So like in the previous thing that we have done for thin cylinders, let's see what is the bursting force. F. This will be P into area pressure into this pressure is applied on the internal portion. So if you see the cross section of a sphere, it is actually a circle. Hence, this will be pi by 4 d square. Now let's talk about the resisting force. Fr. This will be sigma c into area. Now the area is this. So again it is going to be pi d that is the circumference into the thickness. For equilibrium the value of f should be equal to fr. So this will be p into pi by 4 d square is equal to sigma c into pi d t. Pi gets cancelled and one diameter gets cancelled. So what remains for sigma c is Pd upon 40. The formula for sigma c for thin cylinder was Pd upon 2t. Now here there is nothing called as sigma l. So you can just say that this is equal to my sigma l and this is nothing but sigma in general. So the next thing that we are calculating is shear stress. If you recollect the formula for shear stress is sigma c minus sigma l by 2. Here both are equal. Hence the value of shear stress for a spherical vessel is 0. Because this is sigma c minus sigma c by 2. So this is something very important to note. Next let's talk about the change in diameter and volume of spherical shell. So we will start with Circumferential strain EC will be delta D by D. Now this will be sigma C by E. Now you must be wondering what about the other term. So here also I am going to write mu into sigma C by E. Because your sigma L is nothing but sigma C. So this is change along one axis say X and this is change in another axis Y. Now if I substitute this becomes Pd upon 4Te minus mu Pd upon 4Te. Let's take Pd upon 4Te common. What remains is 1 minus mu. This is the formula for delta D by D. So delta D becomes Pd square upon 4Te 1 minus mu. This is the formula for change in diameter for a spherical shell. Now let's talk about the volume part. We know the volume of sphere. V will be pi by 6 dq. So if I differentiate this. Volume with respect to diameter. I will get. Delta V is equal to pi by 6. This becomes 3D square into delta D. 
you are also differentiating partially now i will be dividing both sides by volume so i get delta v by v is equal to pi by 6 3d square into delta d divided by pi by 6 d cube pi by 6 gets cancelled and d square and d cube gets cancelled what remains is 3 delta d upon d delta d by d is this term so this becomes 3 pd upon 4 te 1 minus mu so for volume i can write down change in volume delta v will be p d v upon 4 t e multiplied with 3 and 1 minus mu so that's all i hope you have understood the session if you have any doubts please write to me in the comment section i'll see you in the next session with numericals on this topic thank you